Welcome to another episode of Behind the Picture with your friendly neighborhood photographer. Welcome, everybody. It's me. It's Cardi. Glad you guys are here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in, everybody. Today, we are talking about being outside of your comfort zone. Outside your comfort zone might not be your happy place, but today we are talking about unlocking your full potential and achieving greatness by putting yourself out of your comfort zone. We explore the power of doing just that, getting yourself out of your happy place and putting in yourself into a place that makes you feel those butterflies. When you're a photographer and you're looking to push yourself creatively or otherwise, the best way to do that is to put yourself into new scenarios. Putting yourself outside of your comfort zone is a game changer. Inspirational photographers I'm gonna show you today, we're gonna to reveal some secrets to overcoming fear, doubt, and uncertainty. Many of you might feel those three things. I know that I feel doubt and uncertainty. Fear is not really what I feel at this point in my career when I go out with my camera to make photos, but when I'm shooting a new body of work like I've been doing with my street photography, I just, it's not my wheelhouse. So because it's not my wheelhouse, there's a level of comfort with shooting non-subject related work that actually causes me to have like a little bit of anxiety, but I'm still doing it and I'm still putting myself out there. We're also going to talk about practical tips and strategies for stepping outside your comfort zone. I'm going to give you some tips I'm talking about setting rules, embracing your failure, and just cultivating a mindset for growth because that's really what we're all trying to do. We're trying to grow. So it doesn't matter whether you're exploring new places, trying new things, taking risks, pursuing your dreams. Today, we're going to talk about unlocking your true potential and discovering photography greatness. That photography greatness lies within you, I promise. Join us today on this journey of self-discovery and learn how to embrace the power of stepping outside your comfort zone. Please don't miss this opportunity. Please stay with me as we get into this amazing content. All right, so what does it mean to be outside of your comfort zone? Anytime that you're doing something that you're not necessarily comfortable with, anytime that you're doing something that uh, maybe it's a new type of work that you're not used to shooting. In my example, I'm a portrait and editorial photographer. I'm endeavoring out to shoot street. That's putting me outside of my comfort zone. Now, I'm also, during the time that I'm out there shooting street, I'm also looking at new locations. I'm also looking at light. And I'm also just staying sharp. As a man who is in his early 50s, the whole goal for me as a photographer is I have to stay sharp. I shoot commercially. I shoot editorially. I shoot advertising. I do that still. In between the times that I'm doing those jobs, it's important to stay sharp. So I'm continually pushing myself into new areas. Last episode, we talked about personal work and personal work is another area that my street photography falls into personal work. You have the potential of turning your personal work into professional and commercial work, but you have to make it. You have to make that personal work. You have to put yourself out of your comfort zone, usually in order to make the most profound personal work. So today we are talking about just that. And I'm going to be sharing with you some photographers, some photography masters that have always put themselves out of their comfort zone and have actually gained crazy notoriety from their personal work and the way that they put themselves out of their comfort zone. Whew. Believe me, I've stepped out of my comfort zone many, many times, and I, I know how important it is to do. That's why today's episode is so important. You might have found this episode because you are you have a pull to do something different. You have a pull. The things that you're trying right now are either boring you or 
not giving you that joy from photography that you used to have, if you're missing that joy, if you're lacking that joy, today's episode is for you. Stepping outside of my comfort zone number two, shooting street portraits, shooting strangers. I'm, again, hired by people to take pictures, but when I'm out there with my camera and people don't know me and they don't know who I am, breaking that barrier and introducing yourself and photographing a stranger and doing all of that in a really short time is difficult. That's a great way to put yourself out of your comfort zone. And also, as a photographer, it's a great way to meet new people. If you go out on the street with your camera and start taking pictures of strangers and engaging with people and sharing your social media and getting their social media and tagging them when you share their pictures and they tag you because you've given those pictures to them, it starts a community circle, which is what we're trying to do. We're trying to meet new people and we're trying to get out there with our camera so more people know that we're a photographer. All right, let's get into this week's inspiration. First photographer we're talking about today was known for her incredible portraits, her incredible portraits of marginalized people and unconventional subject matter, such as transvestites, dwarfs, circus performers. She, also, she often put herself in uncomfortable and even dangerous situations in order to capture her subjects in an honest and revealing way. The photographer we are talking about is Diane Arbus. Diane Arbus was an American photographer who was widely recognized as one of the most influential artists of the 20th century. Her work often focused on marginalized and outsider communities, including circus performers, drag queens, and individuals. Um, who I missed my line. <laughs> including drag queens, um, blah, 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 blah. circus performers, and individuals with physical and intellectual disabilities. Diane Arbus. This is Diane Arbus here. Her work is so widely recognized as a photographer you guys all need to know Diane Arbus she put herself in the most insane situations with her camera photographing transvestites photographing twins photographing street people photographing the unfortunate the less fortunate Diane Arbus's work has been <sighs> has been looked at and respected. She died, I think, in 1972. Her images are characterized by their intimacy, their starkness, and the ability to caption hum capture humanity in her subjects. Shooting interracial relationships in the 60s at a time of the civil rights movement was just absolutely insane. She was a master of portraiture, and her photography has been described as both beautiful and unsettling. Arbus's work challenged conventional ideas about beauty and normality, and she was a trailblazer in the use of photography as a means of exploring social and cultural difference. Despite her relatively short career, Diane Arbus had a lasting impact on the world of photography. Her images continue to inspire and provoke audiences. And her legacy as an artist, she challenged social norms and expanded the possibilities that photography as a medium and has made her one of the most important photographers of modern times. Diane Arbus, the first photographer we are looking at today. The next amazing shooter, and this photographer, my word, I almost used this photographer's work on my thumbnail. We are talking about James Nashaway. James Nashaway is a photojournalist who's covered conflicts and social issues All over the world he puts himself in harm's way to document the lives of those affected by war poverty disease nashaway is an american photojournalist who's renowned for his powerful and often haunting images of war 
conflict and social justice. This photograph was the picture I was going to use for my thumbnail, but I thought it was just a little bit too much. Oh, he's covered some of the most significant events in the 20th and early 21st century, including wars in Afghanistan and Iraq, genocide in Rwanda, and the September 11th terrorist attacks. It is his photography of Ethiopia and Ethiopians that brought light to the starvation that was happening in Ethiopia. Nashaway's images for Time Magazine, for all the publications that he shoots for, he is prolific. And a photographer, if you want to talk about being outside of your comfort zone, there is an incredibly famous photograph of James Nashaway. It is called War. And this photograph right here just shows you how absolutely absolutely insane he is as far as putting himself out of his comfort zone he's photographing in conflict on a level that many people um are too afraid to do this is another one of nashaway's very very famous photographs that he sh that he shot that was seen absolutely everywhere his work is marked by its rawness, intensity, and empathy. He puts himself in, in harm's way always and shows war and its dev devastating impact on civilians, soldiers, and communities. His images have been published in magazines such as Time, Newsweek, Nat Geo, and he's received numerous awards and honors for his contribution to photojournalism. Beyond his work as a photographer, he's also a dedicated humanitarian and activist. He's worked with organizations all around the world like Doctors Without Borders and Human Rights Watch to raise awareness of social and political issues around the world. He's used his photography platform to advocate for peace, justice, human rights. This photograph is so hard to look at. His legacy as a photographer and activist has made him one of the most influential and respected world, uh, um, respected figures in the world of photojournalism. James Nashaway. Handsome dude. That is photographer number two that is talking that we're talking about as far as photographers that put themselves out of their comfort zone and create work that is just oof. The next shooter on my very, very fat list of photographers that continually put themselves outside their comfort zone. Our next photographer is a fine art photographer who's known for her controversial portraits of her children, as well as her haunting images of the American South. She often uses alternative, alternative and experimental processes to create her images, and she's known for taking risks and pushing the boundaries of traditional photography. The photographer we're talking about is Sally Mann. Now, you guys need to know Sally Mann. She's an American photographer who's best known for her intimate portraits of her family, and these photographs caused and have always caused since she shot these in the 70s controversy they've caused controversy with um yeah i can't uh i can't zoom in like that i'm sorry they've caused so much controversy because she shows her children in different states of undress but it's her children it's completely beautiful and sally mann is a photographer who's dreamlike quality and her ability to capture beauty and complexity of everyday life. She often used large format cameras and traditional printing methods to create images that have a timeless look and feel. Her photographs are highly personal and she's been praised for her ability to create images that are both intimate and universal. Let's look at a little bit more of Sally Mann's work. Where's my mouse? There we go. Her website's kind of crashing my machine here. Here we go. All right. A little bit more of her selected work. Let's look at some early work. In addition to her work as a photographer, let's see if, I, oh yes, I can use the arrow keys. 
Man also is an accomplished writer and educator. She's written several books on photography and has taught a number. She has taught at a number of prestigious institutions, including Yale and the Tisch School of Arts in New York City. Man's work has been exhibited in museums and galleries around the world. And she's received numerous awards and honors for her, her contributions to the field of photography. Her legacy as an artist who's explored the complexities of the human experience through her images has made one of the most important photographers of her generation. Sally Mann is profound. I hope you guys have seen Sally Mann's work before. I hope I'm not the first one to share Sally Mann with you. This is a story called At 12. Sally Mann. A photographer that has become and is a household name. You guys all know the name that I'm about to say. He is featured on today's thumbnail. We're talking about David LaChapelle. LaChapelle is a renowned American photographer and director known for his surreal, hyper-realistic, and often provocative images. He started his career in the 80s as a photographer for interview and quickly gained repu his reputation for his unique style and the ability to create, um, to capture the essence of his subjects. This is LaChapelle right here. LaChapelle's work during the early 2000s incorporated themes of consumerism, celebrity culture, sexuality, and religion. He's collaborated with numerous high profile clients such as Madonna, Lady Gaga, Michael Jackson. His images are often highly staged and meticulously composed. And he frequently incorporates digital manipulation and vibrant colors to create his signature aesthetic. In addition to his work in photography, he also directs music videos, documentaries, and films. His work has been exhibited in galleries and museums worldwide, and he's received numerous awards and honors for his contributions to the art world. His work continues to inspire and provoke audiences around the world. If you asked a general person, name a famous photographer, they'd say David LaChapelle. There's nobody who had more theater attached to their photography than David LaChapelle. He's brilliant. His style fell out of fashion, as I'm sure you guys have noticed. There was a time when LaChapelle was the most famous and most popular and most often booked photographer in the world. But recently, this style, this overproduced, highly stylized reality look of his photography has literally um, kind of fallen out of favor. So talking about Chappelle, talking about how important his work was at the time when he was the most popular, I think is very valid, but also knowing that he's kind of shifted away from this look and feel with his photography so much so that he's now living in hawaii he's now doing photography of flowers and some other personal work um there's a short video that i will post in the description of this um video that you should actually watch because again i was going to share it during this but um yeah let's just keep it here just like we do it. All right, let's get into the next photographer, Amy Vital. Amy Vital, her work is just absolutely mind blowing. I'm gonna give you a quick little scan of what Google Image says on Amy Vital, but let's look at her website because her website really lays out her her vibes and her stories and also her website if you see how beautiful her website is her website just 
is incredible. Now, I'd like to look at this story called The Last Goodbye. She shot this for Nat Geo. These are basically the last rhinos of their kind. If you want to talk about a photographer that puts herself out of her comfort zone, Amy Vitale. Shooting photojournalism, traveling around the world, also shooting conflict, going to the Congo, shooting some of the most um, emotional stories. This is what she does. And she captures very, very beautifully. I hope you're, you guys are, are aware. Let me know in chat if you guys have been aware of Amy Vitale's work. Her work is just profound. There's actually a, a short five minute film on the work that we're looking at right now. This Rhino collection. She shot this work in 2009. Amy Vitale. Let's look at one more of her stories. This was the last goodbye. Dun, dun, Shaba. Let's see if we can see. This is about elephants. I think, I think, let me see if this is um, the... Shaba. Let me see if this is the short... Um, I think this is the film that I was going to share with you guys. Let me just see if I can find it. I think it's um, five minutes. If it's five minutes, I'm going to share it and we'll react to it because I think it's, um, I think it's really fantastic. And it's something to inspire. Um, where is this little piece of film? Yes, here it is. It's five minutes. This is a very, very beautiful piece of film. Let's get into this and then I will continue with my list. I thought, you know, let's give you guys a little bit of inspiration. You guys are quiet this afternoon. Let's get into a reacts. There's power in silence. There's power in taking the time to observe and listen. Wow, and this give is the shot stage amazing. To others. In this landscape, I need to be a quiet, subtle presence. It allows me to amplify other people's voices. Amazing. I've been working in northern Kenya for 10 years. Watching this story of coexistence, of communities coming together to protect what's left. The story this of the is so great. elephant sanctuary is Tell me you them. don't tell me the you don't first love her. Indigenous own and run elephant sanctuary in all of Africa. Tell me you don't just love her. And when I met them it was just a dream. Everybody said it was impossible. But they were never giving up. If we give up, she'll give up. That's what kept me glued to them. And it's been this beautiful journey to see it evolve into something powerful, something that can inspire all of us. This is beautiful, guys. Amy, be careful. Not to thank you. Do you remember? There was this moment when Shaba, the matriarch of the herd, accepted me. She walked by me and brushed her trunk up. This is shot so me, beautifully, guys. And just Hope you guys are going, feeling it. And allowed me Hope to this be guy's, in the center of all Hope of this. Hope this is inspiring playing. you guys. I just understood at that moment I was accepted by the herd. This footage is incredible. Hi, you beautiful girl. And I knew that the camera actually made a difference because it was silent, because I could just move along. She's a Nikon a ambassador gear. for the Nikon you shooters get these out close, there. Intimate shots. Oh my it God! Exactly how I am in these spaces. That photo. I so have to stop here. It, this picture is everything. Honestly, this photograph is just everything. She's so, 
so 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 talented i hope you guys are feeling amy vital and if you guys aren't aware and have been aware of amy vital's work just look at how this woman is putting herself out of her comfort zone there's really no excuse for us it makes exactly how i am in these spaces <laughs> When I'm working in the field, I need to be immersed and connect to the story. And my gear needs to become invisible. Light, durable, adaptable. That's and she what shoots the video to clips too, which is amazing. To untie the shoelaces. I can switch seamlessly between shooting powerful still images and video. I can run along with the elephants because of image stabilization that's built This is a great commercial for that Nikon like body funny. boy, I'll tell you. <laughs> I can come out from around the camera and see whether it's elephants or people face to face because this is so there are great. these really intimate moments where people I love are opening their hearts to me. I need to be able to look them in the eye and hold oh their my hand god, and that shot! Together. Oh my that oh my shot! <laughs> and as a filmmaker, I love her. Storyteller, She's great. I really believe. She's that great. I'm so glad I chose to share this essential. one with you. This makes me smile. And like the video is amazing the on this body. Holy shit! Me to get closer. They're not afraid. I mean, no whatever camera that you have, this should inspire you to shoot video and tell stories. And trust. It's not a job. It's so long. You're so sweet. I'm gonna die of cuteness overload right here. What a shot. These cameras are empowering. They're empowering me. They're empowering communities. They're allowing us to amplify these important, beautiful stories. I'm Amy Vitale, and I'm a photographer and filmmaker. So great, right? So great. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, I, again, shot so, so, so well. And as you guys can see, the selection of photographers that I chose to share with you today, it really is all about putting yourself out of your comfort zone Amy Vitale's work and the photography that she creates, obviously she's an award-winning photographer. Obviously she shoots for Nat Geo. And you can really just see how much she loves photography. There's no question when it comes to putting yourself out of your comfort zone your love for photography should supersede all of your fears. Your love for photography should supersede everything. And as we get on to the last two photographers, these two photographers influenced me, I would say greater than any other photographers alive or dead. These two shooters influenced my work the direction that my work went, the type of work that I created more than any other photographers that I'd seen um, around that time when I first discovered these two. The first one and photographer number six is Richard Avedon. Richard Avedon, Dick Avedon, my word. He is this guy, oops, let me hide my camera. He's one of my favorites. He was an American fashion and portrait photographer who was known for his iconic images of celebrities and cultural icons. This is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite photographs from Richard Avedon. He often pushed the boundaries of what was considered acceptable in a fashion photograph. This is his early, early, early work. Uh, what, 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 Warhol. He also challenged himself to explore new techniques and new styles throughout his career. 
The reason that I love Richard Avedon so much is because he shot not only fashion, but he also shot portraits. And shooting portraits, he was also very, very active with the civil rights movement and photographing black power people during that time. He's trained his lens on everyone. He was the photographer that brought movement into photography in such an amazing way. This photograph here is one of the photographs that I saw early and it almost allowed me to have my subjects move. Seeing how Richard Avedon photographed movement was one of the most inspirational things for me and the fact that he shot portraits as well as fashion that is the thing that really really threw me the fact that he shot photographs through the american midwest where he would set up a four by five camera in a light tent and the light tent meaning using PVC tubing, he would create like a 10 by 10 foot room that had white diffusion material on the sides, on the back and on the top. And he would just create basically a natural light white box that he would put his subjects in and photograph them. That body of work he took all around the world. And that style of shooting these photographs from the American Midwest, this is his most famous American Midwest photograph. You can see the look and feel of these portraits that he would do um, in this light tent. He also went to Africa and did the same look and feel in Africa. And this work, seeing this work when I was in my early 20s, seeing this work in my early 20s, believe me, this is what inspired me to shoot. Um, oops, let me just go back here. This was the like what inspired me to shoot portraits to really embrace my uh, uniqueness. Richard Avedon, he absolutely, absolutely does and always has floored me. Um, incredible, Richard. Dick Avedon. And I hope you guys like um, Richard Avedon. If you guys not seen Richard Avedon, if you guys have not been influenced by Richard Avedon, come on. I think that we all have a little bit of Avedon. And if you're influenced by me, I'm rich, I'm influenced by Avedon. When you look at my work, you have to see um, <sighs> that core of um, my love for his look, feel, and light. And also just the starkness in the way he shot um and movement the last shooter that i'm going to share with you guys today an armenian photographer and a photographer that i met in person when i was 19 years old i was in photography school myself and uh 10 other students rented a minivan and drove to ottawa to meet Yusef karsh Yusef Karsh, I would say by far, is the most influential photographer for me. I don't think that there's another photographer that I looked at more. I don't think that there's another photographer that I studied their work more. I studied the nuance. I studied the quality, the look and feel of their photography and having time with Karsh right here in his um, in his hotel slash studio, having time with Karsh and having Karsh actually tell the story of Winston Churchill pulling the cigar or, or him pulling the cigar from Winston Churchill's mouth, having Karsh himself tell that story that solidified this photographer for me forever. I've looked at Karsh's work and have been influenced by his light, by his dark backgrounds. You can just see all the things that I've kind of adopted in my work from looking at the work of Yosef Karsh. 
all he needs to do is look at some of this light. And when you look at, let's just pull up a very heavily influenced, oops, heavily influenced by Karsh um, light. All he needs to do is look at my, um, my main page and look at this photograph and you can see the influence as far as light. Yes, the subject matter is different, but seeing this rim light, that, I mean, I saw that in high school. Seeing this light, this light, dark, and then that highlight, Karsh did that with motion picture lights in the 40s, 50s, and this light here on Kennedy, just this is the stuff that masters make. This is the influence that, and his fashion photography, the way that he just had like such a straight up look and feel, like look at his light in his own self portraits. He was a master of theater a master of theater. And this was, again, one more photograph that I almost made today as a thumbnail. His work with still lifes were also absolutely flabbergasted. And um, he photographed royalty. If you are in a Canadian, uh, in a, what is it called? A British Commonwealth country, you have his photographs of the queen on your currency, meaning Australia, Canada, um, and I don't know, a couple of other countries have the queen's face on their money. Josef Karsh, his work as a portrait photographer, he also pushed himself out of his comfort zone by consistently seeking out new challenge subjects, new challenging subjects to photograph. He photographed everyone from world leaders, musicians, cultural icons, world leaders. He's also known for his ability to capture the essence of his subjects in a single photograph. I've heard people tell me that I get that essence of people. Believe you me, I'm working towards the mastery that Yosef Karsh had with that ability. Know that his life's work demonstrates the power of pushing yourself out of your comfort zone. Understand this man was four foot 11, okay? He was very small. He was very quiet and he made the most powerful pictures of the world's most powerful icons. If you want to know who influenced Platon, you have to know it's Josef Karsh. Look at the subject matter. Look at how powerful Platon photographs um, his subjects and know that before Platon, there was Josef Karsh just to give you a little bit of an oomph on Platon. Oops, here we go. Just to give you just a little bit of an oomph of those powerful portraits that I'm speaking about. When I speak about Platon, this is the photographer that I'm speaking of. And no, there is no Platon without the photographs of Yusef Karsh. Clearly, right? If you look at um, Karsh and the way that Karsh shot his portraits. I mean, yes, it's completely different. Look at this photo. But if you look at Platon and some of his photographs, you can see there's there's an influence there's an influence there it's just a lot more stylized with um platon hope you guys enjoy seven photographers that are and have or did push themselves outside their comfort zone and created life-changing work life-changing work i feel that it's all about inspiring right? Like that's what I'm here for. My goal as a photographer um, is to photograph the next generation, photograph the faces of today's generation and pass on the knowledge that I have 
to the next generation. I'm not going to be here forever. So being able to pass on what I know as a photographer for sh after shooting for 30 years, um, it's my role and paying it forward is what I do, baby. Let's get into our next section, foundation. I'm going to help you guys set small goals that are going to push you outside your comfort zone. Setting small goals is a really great way to push yourself out of, outside of your comfort zone. And it's a great way to help you achieve more with your photography. When you set small goals, you break down a larger, more intimidating goal into a smaller picture, into a smaller, more manageable system, manageable in a way that it it's something that you can eat, you know? You can eat a car. You could eat a Cadillac if you like cut it down into small pieces and just ate a little bit every day, right? When you set small goals, what's happening is you're able to achieve these smaller goals and you're able to achieve them one by one. You gain momentum, you gain confidence, which then helps you tackle bigger and more ambitious goals in the future, yeah? So I'm going to set some goals. I'm going to show you how I set goals and I'm going to give you a bit of a guide as to some goals that you guys could set for yourself that could help you. Um, I'm just going to give you a head start. How about that? Let's start with take a photo every day for a month. How about that? A photo a day. There's a great challenge. Um, there's a great challenge for you to um, get into. Take a photo a day for a month. That's just one challenge that you guys could try in order to see if you could push yourself out of your comfort zone. By the way, do you want to talk about um, photo a days? I photographed my daughter. I did a 365 project, meaning when my daughter was born from the first day of her life, I photographed her every day until her first birthday. So that is a 365 project. Believe me, it was incredibly difficult. It was incredibly difficult because I shot a pro portrait with my pro SLR once a day, every day for a year. My son, I managed to get five months and then I have two kids both they're 16 months apart. It was insane being able to keep it up with both of them. But the three doing every day for a month, every one of you guys has the skill set to be able to take one picture per month. So that's the first, let's say, small goal that I'll put out there for you to chew on. Okay. First one, take one photo a day for a month. Okay. The next one, new genres experiment with oops that pen of mine experiment with new genres of photography okay which means if you shoot portraits um shoot street if you shoot street shoot portraits if you shoot wildlife shoot portraits shoot street like shoot new genres of photography urban scapes Put yourself into a new area. If you don't shoot video, if you don't shoot video, if you haven't shot video, start shooting video clips. Here's another little challenge. Shoot clips. I'm not asking you to edit. I'm just asking you to shoot the best clips that you can. Welcome, Saber. I miss you so very much. I'm so glad you're here. So experiment with a new genre of photography. If you shoot landscape, try portraits or street photography. Challenge yourself to develop a new skill. Video is a new skill for most. So I got to tell you, the most famous, most popular photographers that you know, all of them have a presence here on YouTube. I'm going to say Peter McKinnon. Have you heard of him? 
I'm going to say Evan Raff. Have you heard of him? I'm going to say Volandes. Have you heard of him? All of them are using video. All of them are making videos using YouTube as a platform to market, but also as a platform to raise awareness of their work and what they're doing. Video, I added video as something that I could do, something that I was working towards in 2009. I'm 14 years in, literally 14 years in, I'm just starting to feel like I'm getting my stride with video because literally I would do client videos and not really care about making just content for myself, making, I had no aim with my video. I wanted to make videos, but I didn't know why. So now I know why I have a direction, but the time that I have invested in video creation before leading up through this 14 years has made it easier for me to transition into the new format of my channel now. But I put myself out of my comfort zone back then shooting video, but I was never in the videos. New thing, put myself in the video, put myself outside of my comfort zone, do live streams, put myself again outside of my comfort zone. Every one of these live streams causes me to put myself outside of my comfort zone. Every single one of these live streams, everyone is different. You're up against technical issues. You're up against all kinds of different things. And after the fact, it's saved forever. So it's a video. It's not like I'm just making this for shits and giggles. I'm making this to, to add value to the people who choose to watch it. So all of this causes like, ah, but I'm still doing it. I'm still putting myself outside my comfort zone because I believe in the value of the content that I'm bringing you and the value that I'm bringing you, I feel like supersedes my own insecurity, supersedes my own feeling outside my comfort zone. I push through. So the next thing that you can do is attend a photography workshop or a class, like take a course. That's something that all of us should be doing. Take a course, take a class, do something different when it comes to your education. Take a class, a course, do a workshop. And use that as momentum. Take a workshop in something that you're trying to learn. If you're trying to learn video, take a video workshop. Do something that pushes you into learning something new and also learning from a pro like you guys are all doing right now. You're learning from me. Learning from a pro can help your you improve your skills and get your feed and get feedback on your work and also give you a leg up ahead of the other people who aren't doing what you're doing. If you guys submit photos for critique and I give you critiques and then you take that and apply it to the next time you make photographs, that's an advantage for you because you learned something and it happened way faster than you figuring out it on your own. That's why I do photo reviews. It's to accelerate your learning. That's the whole reason. You should never be afraid to put your work on the table, just like you should never be afraid to go to school. You should never be afraid to take a course. Improving yourself, self-improvement, that's how you become a professional. It's all about getting better a little bit every day. So take a course, take a class, um, take a workshop, watch a podcast like you're doing right now, um, get involved. Next, volunteer for something. Volunteer to photograph an event. If you're on the outside looking in, if you haven't, if you haven't like been getting success at shooting for money yet, start putting yourself in situations where if you shot something for free, it would benefit you as much as it would benefit the people that you're shooting for. Like if you put yourself in a situation where they can't afford to hire me to shoot this, but I have a great idea if I shot this, I could get content that could get me more work. Well, that's a no brainer. Volunteer, put yourself out there for those things to photograph that has the potential to make you money later with portfolio photo with new portfolio work and also the people who you worked for for free once paying you if they want you to come again. You hear me talking about this always self-directed projects, um, create a personal project. Creating a personal project is anything, anytime you do personal work, create a project. Anytime you do personal work, if you do it a second time, it's a project. Create a personal project. 
Now, whether that's street photography, whether that's macros, whether whatever it is that you're creating, you should be able to just have 10, 12 different ideas that you're working on simultaneously. They're self-directed projects. I have videos that I've made on self-directed projects. I have podcast episodes that I've made on self-directed projects. Do a search on my page find one of those self-directed projects videos and watch it. And hopefully it'll inspire you to just start a self-directed project. I have right now probably 10 of them going because most of you guys know on black, multiplicity, 60 second portraits, my street photography, um, shooting running shoes, shooting fixed gear culture. Um, all of this stuff is all ongoing self-directed projects that I have. And there's like so many of them whenever I, shoot something I'm always feeding like when I shoot something for myself I'm always feeding one of those self-directed projects so I suggest that you start some self-directed projects so when you're in that place where you don't have anything to shoot um, you can just go to one of your self-directed projects and continue to feed that beast so create a photography project could be a series on a specific theme or subject that challenges you to think creatively and develop a new body of cohesive work Another thing that I don't know if you do often, I don't do often enough, but I'm doing more, um, Lightroom practice. This is, seems so basic, Lightroom practice. How good are you at Lightroom? Are you, I guess that's a C, are you amazing at Lightroom or are you just okay? Are you amazing at Lightroom? Are you just okay? That's the thing. We have to improve at Lightroom. We have to improve our raw processing. I feel like I've gotten better at processing in the last three months because I have put in the effort to get better at processing. Turtle, you know that I've processed your raws in the last little while. You know that... Um, me processing your RAWs helps you get better at processing your RAWs. Me learning how to do the things that I then in turn show you, I have to actually learn it. There's some things like I'm very, very simple with my processing. I'm very simple with what I do in my post, but I want to get better. I want to get better at what I do in my post. So my photographs get better. So I create a unique look and feel to my photographs that I do on the back end that no one else can do. That's important to me. So I'm focusing time on getting better at Lightroom. I practice Lightroom. And I think that you also should practice Lightroom and practice getting better at editing your photography. Editing is crucial. Improving your skills on the back end can help you take your photography to the next level. How many times I see people make amazing photographs and they submit them and they butcher them in post-production amazing photographs but what they do on the back end isn't close to what they need to do in order to really bring out the best in their photography you know so i started processing your raws that's why i started doing that so i could help you get better on the back end you guys need to practice processing your photos and the last thing on this list of just like small goals that you guys could help like could incorporate yourself this is just a list of like, uh, like sort of uh, example goals that you guys could be setting for yourself. Um, the last one I'm going to talk about is networking with other photographers. We all are like wallflowers as photographers. We're all solo artists. Yes or yes. Networking with other photographers. This is why I have this discord. Other photographers have things to give you. They have things to share. Other uh, photographers, that's what I'm trying to write. Other photographers have things to share with you. So if you allow them to share, if you socialize, if you network with other photographers, if you go on photo walks, do these things. This year, if you're in Toronto, I'm going to be doing a photo walk a month. There's going to be one a month. So if you guys are in Toronto, you'll be able to sign up 
You got to join my mailing list, by the way, if you're watching this and you want to know about my photography networking events and my photography meetups, join my mailing list. There's going to start being one a month starting probably in April, once it gets nice enough to be able to going out, to be able to go out and walk around with your camera. So I'm trying to grow a community of people from Toronto, from here, or who are willing to come to Toronto to do photo walks. And again, I'm gonna make videos on these photo walks so that the video will go on YouTube, you'll get some attention, and I'll also be taking photographs that you guys create on these photographs, on these photo walks, and assembling them into a video. So it'll be like, hey, this is you, and this is the photo that you took during the photo walk. Like, I just think that it's a great, it's a great way to extend my lens diaries and to push it out to like more people. You know what I mean? And the stuff that I learn while I'm on these lens diaries, while I'm on these photo walks alone, just having more photographers with me to do that. Starting next week, there's a photographer who found me um, through a friend and has now subsequently watched a couple of videos and now he wants to go out on a walk and shoot, which we're doing next week. Another photographer, Brian Brock, photographer from Toronto, he wants to go out on uh, like a walkie talkie. So I'm going to be bringing you photographer interviews in a different way. They won't necessarily be online. They're going to be in person. We're both going to be out shooting and talking about the things that I ask people usually when we're in these kind of one-on-one -on -one interviews. So networking with other photographers is a really important thing. I'm starting to network with other photographers way more. I suggest you guys net with, with photographers as well. If you're watching this as a video, I have a Discord, which is a very small community of like 250 photographers, but I promise you it's going to grow to thousands of photographers there sharing their work. Having your work reviewed right now is easy. You just submit your work, I review it. Um, but as we get into the spring, summer, there's going to be way, way, way more photo submissions. So getting your submissions in early. Um, and I'm also going to do episodes where I'm going to spend the entire episode just looking at photos. So networking with other photographers, joining this discord, going on photo walks, all of these things, like there's strength in numbers. And Mr. Beast, which is a very key thing, Mr. Beast said this, it's way smarter to learn in a group than it is to learn as an individual. If you learn in a group, what happens is this, okay? I have a group. This group is you guys, right? So I learned something Tuesday from trying to go through a process. I learned something Tuesday. Thursday, when I'm here talking to you guys, I tell you. So now all of you guys now know it. The next time all of us do that thing again, we all know that one thing that I learned. That's group think, right? So as a photographer, if you're out and you're shooting and you're with a group and you're sharing your photographs, you have other people right there helping you make better photographs as it's happening. It's organic. It's how we learn faster. The next day you make a mistake. You now come into the, and you're like, hey, I shot this and this is what I found and you share the examples and now you've taught all of us. Now, this is group think. This is you now having a problem, discovering the problem, fixing the problem and then sharing that problem with us and also your solution. Now, when we come up with that problem, we have someone within our collective that's gone through it, that shared the solution, their experiences and now, it just makes it like it's not our first time. That's genius. That's how Mr. Beast has grown as a creator and myself as a creator. How I've been growing is by continually paying it forward throughout my career. If I learn something, I share it. In information's free. You know, if you are resourceful, information is free. So I'm trying to give you free information. That's what I'm doing here. Um, but I'm not the only one. I have an amazing network of photographers that are sharing great information on my Discord, so join. So by setting up small goals like this, you can challenge yourself, you can develop new skills, and you can grow as a photographer. You have to also celebrate your achievements. Don't forget to celebrate your achievements. If you actually put yourself out of your comfort zone and go out there and make photographs or shoot portraits when you're a macro shooter or shoot macros when you're a portrait shooter, when you put yourself out of your comfort zone and do something new, 
celebrate the results celebrate yourself for doing that you have to um celebrate your achievements along the way no matter how small they seem each success will give you the motivation to keep going each small success will give you the motivation to keep going a couple of bonus um on this list of seven i like sevens today uh explore a new place go someplace new go into a new neighborhood with your camera get on the subway travel into a new hood jump out take pictures like put yourself in a new physical place instantly you're inspired instantly everything around your eyes looks new and you'll find yourself creating um with vigor take a risk with your subject matter um if you've never shot a nude shoot a nude if you've never shot a model shoot a model if you've never shot a portrait a landscape put yourself into a situation where you have a new thing of beauty in front of your camera to capture that's another huge tip and again when you set monthly goals for yourself if you set monthly goals for yourself when you make smaller goals rather than one massive one break those goals into smaller bite-sized pieces each time you achieve one of them like raise a hand have a drink it's a celebration every time you hit one of those goals and know that you can do this you can be a professional photographer you can be successful at this you just have to dive in diving in is putting yourself out of your comfort zone for sure the reason that many people don't make it as a professional photographer is just fear it's fear of the unknown will i work will i be able to sustain myself and that fear alone keeps so many people out of the, the the creative pool out of the place of where they could be getting jobs as a photographer so many people just choose to stay scared so if you choose to not be scared and push yourself out of your comfort zone you'll find yourself in a career like i mean i'm a professional photographer i i, I wonder <laughs> like when i'm on these jobs where i'm making you know five figures to shoot photos you're like wow, this was great. <laughs> you know what I mean? But again, it's just perseverance, pressure over time equals results, you know, if there's talent. So I hope you guys found that very helpful today. That is a little bit of, we'll call it foundation. This month's theme, you guys know, is perspective. And we have been... I've been giving you guys mini challenges every week. Every week, there's a new mini challenge. I've noticed just through the frequency, I guess, that people are doing the mini challenges that not a lot of people are doing mini challenges. Not a lot of people are doing mini challenges. And you have to imagine right now, I am at the end of month two with my new like formatting. I have, I've literally, episodes planned for the entire year i know what i'm going to be talking about with you guys every month until december so because i'm giving you guys four challenges a month four challenges a month as a photographer that's not full-time or even is full-time who has a life who has kids who has things that you have to do four challenges a month might be a lot so I'm going to pull back on how many challenges I give you per month. It's not going to be four. It's going to be one. I'm going to give you one challenge a month. But in me giving you one overall challenge of the month that you make photographs for, you, you can do many different attempts at that same challenge. You can hit that challenge from many different directions. And the way that I'm going to create these challenges today is going to be the first one that because this is the last episode of the month, I'm going to kind of reveal what the new challenge is. This week, I'll be looking at all the challenges that you guys have done up until now. But going forward, there's going to be monthly challenges and I'm going to make specific episodes that later on in the month like that's all I'm doing is looking through all of them although I will look at them throughout the month so 
Oh, by the way, guys, thank you for making it this far. Thank you. You call yourself a photographer. Look how you're dressed. Yes, you. You just wear track pants, t-shirt. If you're gonna wear track pants and a t-shirt, at least look fly like me. Here, take this. Right? How fly do you look now? You guys wanna get the flyest apparel for creatives and photographers, you gotta tune into that merch store. There it is. Look at, I have over a hundred items spread between two merch stores, limited edition drops, every video that you watch on YouTube, as well as on all my channel pages. You'll see the links for my merch store. Make sure that you guys jump in there and look fly like I do when you're shooting. Let's get it on. Ooh, I just made that three seconds ago, as you can see, it's, I'm, I don't know, I'm good. Know that um, if you guys decide to cop some merch, first of all, it makes you look great. As you can see, I'm loving this new collection. This, what I'm wearing right now is from my secret merch store from my limited edition drops. This is the I collection. The I collection is pimp. I'm wearing fully eye collection right now. I had the hat, the toque on, but it was a little um, hot. Because I'm not monetized yet, um, merch is a great way to support the stream and also you physically get something that you can wear while you're shooting. So consider checking the merch store. I guarantee that you'll see something that you like. Um, also, because I'm not monetized, there's no super chats as yet. There's no way for you guys to super chat but you can you literally can just do straight donations if something that i've given you today has helped you you just type command tip in chat while we're live or just look in the description of this video and it'll show you a link you can drop me a dollar and i'll buy a coffee but obviously donations are not necessary this is free content um the whole vibe about this it's free content um but again if you want to support extra, know that I've created abilities for you to do that. But watching my videos, it helps me more than you could know. Watching my videos helps me more than you could know. So FYI, in the last three months, since I've started really, really pushing YouTube and focusing all my energy on two channels, not just one, but two channels, I've gained like 300 subscribers since I've put the effort into this channel since I've been live streaming here consistently, since I've been uploading videos consistently, so many new people have found me. And if you're one of those new people who found me and you've made it to the end of this video, thank you. I really appreciate you. If you guys are one of my OGs and you know who you are, keeping along this journey with me, thank you. It means absolutely everything. I appreciate you guys so much. And if you guys love photography like I do, if you're as passionate as I am about photography, making photos, um, hit the subscribe button. I'm obsessed. I hope you're obsessed as well. All right. So, um, by the way, participating, being active, submitting photos, being active in chat, all of this, all of this helps. All of it helps. So before I review your photos, Matt Howe, let's go, baby photo tease, eh? You want a photo tea? Okay, we're going to talk about that. Um, I'd like to talk with you about that because you're a designer, so I'm interested in your two cents. <laughs> All right, so to give you an idea as far as the way that the challenges are going to shift, I'm going to let you know that uh, what's our next month's challenge? Ch -ch 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 challenge? Let me give you let me give you a little bit of a taste as to what this next challenge is gonna be. So I'm gonna challenge you to push yourself to make a photo that captures a subject or a scene outside your comfort zone. Identify a subject or scene that you wouldn't normally photograph. This could be anything from an urban area, a crowded public space, 
a dark alley. <laughs> Be safe if it's dark alleys that you're shooting. A wild animal or a person from a different cultural background than you. Identify a subject or scene that you wouldn't normally photograph. Anything from an urban area, crowded public space, dark alleys, wild animal, or a person from a different culture or background. Once you've identified your subject or scene, think about how you can capture it in a way that feels new or different to you. Could involve experimenting with a new technique, using a different lens, shooting with a different body, or simply trying to see the subject or the scene from a new perspective. If it's a person, use your voice, put yourself out there, say something, ask like, hey, can I take your picture? Can you stand here? Can you pose here? Can you pose this way? Trying it with a stranger, it's, it's, it's like, it's really putting yourself out there. But again, this is why this is called a challenge. As you're taking your photos, pay attention to how you're feeling. This is really key. Pay attention to how you're feeling as you're taking these photos and know that like you'll you'll feel like different are you nervous are you uncomfortable are you excited are you energized try to capture those feelings with that photo try to capture those feelings with the photo whether it's through the use of color composition or other elements and then after you've taken your photos, take a moment to reflect on the experience. How did it feel to step outside your comfort zone? What did you learn about yourself as far as how you handle being outside your comfort zone? And then how can you apply what you learned from putting yourself outside your comfort zone? How can you apply this to a new area of photography? How can you apply this um, to your future work? Remember, obviously, the goal of this challenge is to push yourself to try something new and to capture a photography, a photograph that feels outside your comfort zone. Push yourself to try something new and capture a photo that feels outside your comfort zone. Do not worry about being technically perfect instead focus on the experience of trying something new and what you learned from it so this is a challenge you can do this at any point this month but know that um i'm just going to review what march's ch uh yeah it is march right march's challenge or march's theme is creativity exploring the way that creativity can enrich our lives and how to in unlock our own creativity and how to overcome creati creative blocks. So March is all about exploring ways in which creativity can enrich our lives, how to unlock it and how to push through creative blocks. So that's what we're gonna be talking about all month of March because why i know that you guys are dealing with creative blocks right now i can feel it just based on how often you guys are submitting photos how often you guys are sharing photos with me it's not as often as it was and because of that i can tell that that's because you guys are likely feeling some blocks you're likely feeling some creative blocks so <laughs> march we're almost at spring it's gonna be spring like any day now. So because of that, you, I feel like you guys might need a good, a good like month of content in order to help you guys get out of your comfort zone, you know? Next thing, um, we're gonna look at your photographs in just a sec. I just wanna do a little bit of housekeeping. My observations from just doing this now for three months, looking at my analytics, like I've been doing three live streams a week on YouTube every week since the first of November. I know that my Sunday stream behind the picture, this is the big show of the week. This is the one that everybody looks forward to. And this is the one that I look forward to as well. 
I know that Tuesday, Thursday show, Ask a Photo Pro, I wanted to make those shows more about photo reviews only. Make them only photo reviews, only interactions with you guys. Make it really about um, giving myself uh, to you like twice a week during the week. What I've found is not a lot of people are able to watch Tuesday and Thursday. Not a lot of people are able to watch during the day because they're working. It's two o'clock. The reason I do it at two o'clock is because I have viewers in the UK who it's evening for them. I have uh, viewers in California. It's morning for them. Like, I'm just basically thinking about my time slots. I've been thinking a lot about my time slots. And should I do one of those two streams during the evening? First thing I'm thinking, should I do it 7 p.m.? Ask a photo pro. You can watch it prime time at home, right? Should I do that? I've never done an evening stream, a photo stream, something I'm thinking about. The other thing I'm thinking about is I'm very close to monetizing. Like I'm roughly at, I've obviously I've hit a thousand subs. I'm at about 2,500 watch hours. So I'm two months away from monetizing. But I also know as far as my traffic, my views, my lives are like the least viewed out of everything that I do. People watch my videos, people watch my shorts. Um, so I have to figure out a way to just get the most out of the time that I'm spending during my Tuesday, Thursday streams. So, and also to give you guys the most value, it's hard because sometimes there's no photos to review. And when there's no photos to review, it's like, okay, well, that's why the shows are so short. You know what I mean? But also those podcasts, the average time that people watch is like 20 minutes, 25 minutes. So if I made those podcasts shorter, you know, I don't know. I just want you to know, I'm thinking about my Tuesday, Thursday show. Um, there's a chance that if I do less live streams, the live streams that I do do are going to be bigger with more viewers. So I'm interested in your feedback. You guys can leave feedback feedback in the comments below. Um, comments is, is great. Please leave comments. Please hit the like button on this video. The more likes, the more people who see this. So super important. Um, Oh, new photographs from Les. Let's go. My brother went out and shot some amazing photos. Turtle shot some amazing photos. Matt Howe shot some amazing photos. And Saber submitted a photo. So let's get into the reason that you guys are all here. Real photo reviews, yeah? All right. Let's get into some real photo reviews with my brother, Les has shot some new photographs. He says he is walking with giants at Royal Roads University, Victoria Island, Victoria. These are from my phone. He can't wait to edit his, um, his Canon camera shots when he gets back home next week. Wow. This is new photography from my older brother, Les, shot with his iPhone or his Android. This is really beautiful, Les and his beautiful wife. This is really pretty, Les. I mean, the Android, your Android shoots so narrow and so long, like the proportion is so strange, but it's really perfect for this photo. I really like this a lot, Les. Let's go. This is a great scene, great light, and really, really great quality. It's like your phone, when you give it the right light, like it really sings. Yeah, this is a great series, bro. This is great. This is the second one without Chalet. Yeah, Les, this is great. I like this a lot. Really great. Okay, this is now my favorite. This is my favorite so far. Really great. I can't, I, I can't. Oops. I can't wait to see um, your Canon shots. I can't wait. Really great. Oh, I just saw that one. Lastly, Jesus, this is great, bro. Really great. Another fantastic one. 
Let's go. Bro, like your eye, you have such a great eye for this, man. It's so great. It's so great. You can like my brother is not a photographer. Um, he's a painter. And I I really all my artistic influence comes from him. So he's not trying to be a photographer, but how he uses photography in order to help him see in three dimensions. I'm going to just give you guys a little bit of backstory. My brother is blind in one eye. Okay. He only sees with one eye and he wears a contact lens in that eye. So my brother is legally blind and, um, he's a photorealistic painter. So he doesn't see in 3D, like he doesn't have the same depth perception that we do. So it's just like, he, he uses his disadvantage as an advantage. I'll get him, I'll get it emotional if I start fucking talking about um, the miracle that is my, my brother. He uses his um, disadvantage with his vision as an advantage. And um, he's able to really make amazing photographs and paintings. And um, he just has a really unique perspective because of that. And um, although Les isn't trying at all to be a pro photographer, he just has a great vision when it comes to making photos, you know, and anything that I can do to help him make photos better, I'm going to help him. But know that, like, he helps me. And you may be looking at his photographs and being like, yeah, it's, it's with a phone. It's not even with real, real cam, like it's not even with real camera. It's like, yeah, just know that like my brother uses photography in a completely different way. It's like visual sketches. You know what I mean? So, um, I just, I encourage my brother to fly in this way. And he's my older brother, by the way. Um, I encourage him to fly in this way. And he does, he does. It's so great. Look at this one so great so great less the horizontals are just are just like mind-blowing dude the horizontals are so good so good i want to make sure i'm not missing any yeah we just saw that one yeah the horizontals are so good is this termites or is this just this tree the exposure on this one's a bit hot, but still, it's okay. Still. What a strange tree, bro. Strange tree. Really great. Les, like, what a great exercise. You did a great job, bro. Good job. I have a couple Let's favorites. Go. I got a couple favorites, like... um, I got a couple favorites. Hmm... I'm gonna give it to you this one right here for your best photo, bro. This one is just, um, this is great. Like I just, this is amazing. I'm gonna call this one my favorite. And um, this one a close second. These ones are very similar, but I think I think you nailed it with like the focus and everything on this one last, so great job. Brother Les Cardi, all the way from Kamloops, British Columbia with the first first submission bro let's go good work all right let's see who else we have in the queue who wants to share photos we have turtle turtle says new photos let's have a look turtle's first photo is a big one. it's loading good shit turtle gave a nice big file let me just hide my photo here This is a little bit flat, like not in contrast. The contrast is right, but I mean in just lacking color. I feel like this picture would be a better black and white photo. Um, but the lines, the leading line is great. I think that, um, oops. I think that the lines that you have happening here are really fantastic. Um, I'm just talking about the tone of like the top of these trees and how it just feels a little bit like mono, which I, again, I don't mind. Um, I feel like down here is the most interesting part of this photo, but your discipline with your leading lines into the corners is really strong. 
Turtle, you're a great shooter. And each time that you submit these photos, you get better. This particular picture, I don't think that it hits more because I think it should be a black and white photo than a color one. But um, what you shoot and what you've been choosing to shoot has been getting better and better and better and better. This is a really interesting frame. And I can see that you're trying my technique here where you're pulling certain you're pulling certain parts of the color out of this photograph, which you can see right away, like areas here that are black and white that have essentially no color where there's green here, but like it's really interesting. And also you can see the roads black and white. You're using selective color. I still think that there's more colors that you need to bring back, bring back in more colors. Um, but I like what you're trying. I like what you're trying. I really like the focus of this, um, cabling machine. This is super cool. Um, and again, you're really great with the leading line. Look at this junk that's in here, the junk that's in here. Um, I really like this photo. I feel like you can really still bring out more in the processing and just keep massaging it. Um, our eye sees this black and white and color together too much. So I feel like bring in just a little bit more tone so you don't feel like you're missing data, which this is kind of what this photo feels like. Um, but again, compositionally strong turtle. Let's look at another. This is strong. This is strong. This is strong. Really good light. Really good light. I love the direction of the light, the highlight on this side and the shadow here, but just how the value, you don't let your shadow go too far. We have good detail here. We have good detail in the actual shadows down here, like really strong detail turtle and the contrast is good the contrast is relatively good we have areas of white and areas of black and areas of gray so for me this is a really strong photo turtle this is a good one this is a good one and you see how i break them down this is a really good photo um your discipline with your corners like this is now becoming a style thing the way that you shoot this cross composition is really strong turtle and you've been doing it over and over and over again. I want you to stay with it because this is working. Like this is for sure working. I write like a doctor, this is working. Um, so I like it and I want you to stay with it turtle. This is really, really good. You should be very proud of that photograph. Let's look at another. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I like this processing better than the other one where you were missing a couple of elements. Let me hide my camera. The angle is, is where I'm a little lost. Like we talked about this before with some of your earlier drone photography. This doesn't look like a drone. Um, it doesn't look drone. It looks like you're just on a hill sort of aiming down. I need a more extreme view of this because of the pattern that's happening, no lie, from these trees being uprooted, I'm sure if you sky your drone and look down, you're gonna see like really cool patterns like some of the other photographs that you make like here. I would love to see that bird's eye top down with this photo. I don't think that you've skied it high enough. Um, again, it's just, when you look at a photo like this turtle, you can see, like just the energy, the light, the that cross composition that again, I say is becoming a signature turtle. Like look at into the corners, like he forces his composition into the corners and forces his composition into the corners. And doing this with a drone while you're piloting is really difficult. This turtle, you nailed. And for me, this is um, your best photo, your best photo. And I see all the effort that you're putting into this. This is, this is like the culmination of everything coming together. The light that you have happening, the time of day, 
everything is working in this photo turtle this is is your best and you've skied the drone you could even sky the drone more and push the drone more this way so you're aiming more top down you're still hitting this at a bit of an angle but it's still really interesting you can see how the road goes skinny here and then gets fat that's because of the angle at which you're angling down on it it would be nice if you could hit this a little bit more top down um, you have done that before but again maddie is saying super nice i'm saying super nice as well you should be very happy with this this looks very very beautiful photographs from turtle we are looking at and that is turtle's last one turtle for me unequivocally this last photo is your banger like there's no question this one is the best photo that you've submitted for us today um this one's a close second this one's a close second like i really this is really strong i'm liking the fact that you're getting better at choosing when is it a color photo and when is it a black and white photo you're not going to hit every time but you're getting better and um keep shooting um turtle has two kids he's just had surgery he's dealing with like lots of stuff but he's still out there shooting turtle also joined substack so he's also blogging he's posting every week like turtles inspired and he's really trying hard he's also a really great writer so um I'm really trying to enable Turtle with all the tools that I'm using in order to get um, his work out there. Turtle's at that point where he's trying to do a business plan. He's trying to think, how can I make money with the skill sets that I have? I'm going to help him in the coming weeks develop his portfolio and really um, start targeting some of the people who he should be trying to reach out to. Um, yeah, uh, uh, he's great. Um, Turtle's in a great spot right now and really ready to like jump off that diving board and start his professional career. So Turtle, good on you, my guy. I appreciate you. I appreciate all your hard work and know that um, it's recognized. I see how hard you're trying. All right, Matt Howe is a photographer. He is from Toronto. He is also an incredible designer, art director, clothing designer. Like Matt is one of those creatives um, that does it all. And he's a photographer. He, I met him first. Um, he came to me uh, looking for help with photography and he assisted me for quite a while. And um, then uh, while he was in, uh, art school and then he went on to work for a whole bunch of advertising agencies so mike is up uh, mike matt is an advertising executive and matt's advertising background really influences the way that he photographs but um yeah matt says stepping out of speaking of out of my comfort zone i shot a bunch of photos at the henderson brewery winter cask festival yesterday for a little beer brand that he's been building maddie also has like some other side hustles a couple of other projects that he's working on so this is some beer photography that he did for his own beer brand this is great shots matt really great light really great nuance the glasses look great it's a lifestyle photo that's selling you beer but you don't know that it's selling you beer and it's a really it's really strong cover composition if you can see this as a cover obviously the stuff that's happening up here isn't quite as important matt's cut off his chin because like he's really trying to focus your eyes on the the environment the lifestyle Matt, this is a great frame, like a really strong frame. The light's great. The highlights are great. Contrast. I got no complaints here at all. I would love to give just a little bit more space to the glasses. It's kind of tricky. Like this particular frame, I would probably be a little bit more of a lower angle just to elevate this, um, this eye line a little bit. Um, I would probably pull out just a touch just to give you a little bit more separation here. Glass placement, I'd move the glass over just a bit just to give us a little bit more here. And then I would put a touch of a different color of beer here just to give like 
one, two, three variations if in fact there are. And if there's not, then just put another bit of this here. Again, small things. Um, I don't know whether those small things would add or take away. Um, this little area just makes me a little claustrophobic by how close you are to the edge here. Also, this is an eight by, this is eight inches down this way is 12 inches. We lose an inch top bottom when we go to uh, Instagram. So you're going to lose here or you're going to, and you're going to lose here. So this, that exists sort of in this space becomes what you, what you post, which again is a reason why I would go a little bit lower to push these glasses a little bit higher in the frame. But, um, Matt says these were all super quick off the cuff. Um, it makes him anxious when he's in crowds shooting, especially when he's shooting with his 75 millimeter. Um, Matt shoots with a Leica and shooting with a 75 with the Leica, like you're really forced to like, you're not, he's not as used to being, he's used to shooting with the 35. So you're relatively punched in, but this forces him to get back and then he's in a crowded bar. So I do understand how you're out of your comfort zone. You manage to make great photographs. Um, know that when the viewer sees the photo, we're not seeing, we're not seeing like all the shit that's happening around the photo. We just see the final result. So um it's all about the the pudding <laughs> you know what i mean let's look at another one from maddie all righty 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 this is great matt i like this a lot strong strong really strong dude this is great really great and when you enlarge this picture first of all just take this in as a cover it's on the money i really like it the light that's happening matt and the sharpness that's happening is really great. And you're really starting to nail your exposure. Like you're not losing any highlights at all. You're not losing any highlights out the window. You have good shadow detail, but with the right mood, the texture on the fabric on his skin, even the brightest areas of his of the photo where it could, should, would blow out. You managed to nail the exposure. Like you fucking nailed this, Matt. This is so on the button. And again, I'm enlarging this. You see the whole photograph and really take in now this beer glass. You can see how it's lit. It has a great highlight. Oops, it has a great highlight on the edge of the glass, which is great. The highlight that's happening on the wires and this band of light that's coming in this way just makes this photograph amazing, Matt. Like you, you fucking killed this one, dude. I love it, love it, love it, love it. I'm giving you the smoke, my guy. This is um, favorite today so far. Really great, really great. I just, Maddie, I try to push you, bro. That's the whole vibe. I, I try to push you into new areas always, 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 always. This photo, again, really strong, a little claustrophobic on the edge. This is, it's too tight. You need to give yourself more room than this, Matt. This makes me nuts because once you go to print, you're, you're losing like the thickness of this. And then it just makes it just makes how close the edge of the frame is to these cans just a little claustrophobic. I would just want you to pull back and like just double this. Give me the edge of the cans like here. You know what I mean? So you have that distance. So then when it cuts and it goes here, it just makes it like, you know. And then the other thing is contrast. Contrast is a bit low in this one. It's a bit low. Um, the best way I think to nail this contrast is to process this um, the way that I pull out the I pull out all the saturation and then um, find a perfect black and white contrast which with this photo and then bring the color back once you sort of have the contrast. That's how I've been processing. Um, you can you really have to have a trained eye, but if you look at this photo and you imagine it black and white, it's flat. If you imagine everything that's in here, the values, it's 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 a little flat. I need it to have more punch. 
That's all. Um, so again, I would love to see a reprocessing of this. And then the two loons, um, this per this front can, I think you got to rotate this can, Matt. So it feels like the label is facing us. You can see how the label here versus the space here. If you just rotate this can to like look at camera, what it does is it then it cuts away the barcode and the ingredients and all the other shit on the can as you're turning it. Just rotate the can this way. It squares up the label. So now the label sort of sits center and it sort of makes the front can feel like the hero can. You can also take this can and move this can here. So this can is like the feature can and these ones are more out of focus. And then you really get to like square up this can a little bit more. The fact that you're shooting them all in a line and you have dark and then light if you want it to feel more like a product shot, you just got to move yourself this way, aim it more this way, so the white becomes the only background. Just two cents in a bag of chips and the contrast. Good shots, Maddie, And a couple more from him. This is just outside at the Henderson Brewing. Co. Lots of colors here. This is one that I would say a black and white might serve you well in this photo. A black and white might serve you well. And then this extra bit that's happening up here is not necessary. This photo I would cut like here. But when you go to an 8x10, you can afford to cut up there and then down here, probably down here to right underneath this guy's chin is where I'd cut the bottom. But it's a good frame. I like it. It's a good frame. It works as a cover. Um, but mind your crops for sure. All right, I think there's one more from Maddie, which is his, the kegs, two loons kegs, let's go. Again, you shot with the 75. This is one that you can see, I can tell that you wanted to be back further. You probably couldn't get up high enough and back enough to see the top of this, which you're trying to see. You're also trying to see the labeling down here. Um, but where your cut here um, is what's throwing me a little bit, where your cut here. Um, it's a tricky, it's tricky framing. It's tricky framing because you're trying to shoot this like on the fly. Um, yeah, this is one that you get on a chair and you aim straight down. I would want to see that like a top down kind of shot, you know, again, just um, yeah, I think you did a great job for shooting off the cuff, Matt. I think your favorite, my favorite shot um, and your best shot from that whole series is this one. This is the one that, um, Let's go. this is your best photo. Let me know if you agree. By the way, guys, if you want to have your photos reviewed, please join my Discord. You'll find the link for my Discord in the description of the video that you're watching. Super easy to find. And Saber has some photos. Let's go. Haven't seen Saber for a while or photos from Saber. Saber says some pics from an Italian metal band, portraits for social media, etc. Shot with a phase one P30 back 80 millimeter, front softbox, and a beauty dish backlight. Let's go, Saber. This guy looks a little angry. 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 You cropped this already for me. You've pre-cropped this to like a nine by 12 proportion, which is great. You can see when we're making this a cover saber, the headroom, because the, the proportions, the way that you're shooting this, these are covers, right? Like these are magazine covers. So because of that, and because you've cropped this in such a great way, you've cropped this in such a way where you have good space here, you have good space here, um, you've also probably had extra room down here. That's why you've already cropped this shot for us, but it's the headspace. The headspace is where like you got to give good headspace. Cause think if it's like heavy metal magazine or whatever, if they want to submit for a magazine, it just gives us, and also you can always crop closer to the head. You can always bring it in. If there is more room on the top of this photo saber, I'd love to see it. His expression, the tattoos, the light, everything else is quite good. Um, 
your light in the front saber is a bit safe especially like with like a heavy metal band you can see the placement of your light it being like relatively flat isn't giving us a lot of shadows it's not giving us a lot of shadows up here i wouldn't mind seeing that light skied like higher so it puts a little bit more like molding in his face because his face is a little bit wide that's going to give him that and also if you want that gritty like heavy metal like you have to give contrast you have to give shadow there has to be like half of his face is a little bit dark or you've lit him from the top so it's like right now this feels a little flat in the lighting but again it's like I know you're multi you're doing multiple different things you're touring as a as a band member and photography and your job like there's a lot of stuff that you're doing um, I'm glad that you're here I'm glad that you're back I'm glad that you're shooting just try to like be riskier with yeah I know that you have too many things saver this is what I'm saying don't be afraid to be risky with your light and you have been risky with your light before you know I know that when you're shooting something for a job you want to be like safe but um I think you could have gone a little bit more drama with the light this scenario here where now he's turned his face he's turned his face to the light so it's actually shadowless on his face now because he's looking into the light the highlight that you have here the fact that this is like plus a third and it's not burning out exposure all of this stuff saber like you this is a great execution it's a great execution the only thing that i'm saying is that it's safe right it's a safe execution when the subject matter is like heavy metal rough black t-shirt like you have all the elements with the black t-shirt the gray background i just want to see you like be riskier with your light that's all just and again you can always make your like you can always start safe and then get risky at the end which is usually what i try to do just to make sure you cover all the bases but did it a great job let's look at another this is great you can see what i mean here saber just the difference between when this subject is turning if you, the light's not changed right the subject here turned towards the light right it's super flat on his face this here the subject turns away from the light now you have drama shadow crazy highlight and his elbow is shadowing in here so it just has it has yeah i can tell but i'm saying like this vibe the highlight on his arm here the fact that he's turning away from the light just makes the the look so much more interesting on him the elbow i would normally not have like an elbow so forward to camera but um because it's so tattooed it actually looks kind of good and you caught him in motion so this is a good one this is my favorite so far this is my favorite um so far and again now now you know when you go in there you can like be riskier you know especially w when you're shooting people who are so handsome like this guy is very handsome when you end up lighting him flat because he has like it almost looks like he uses like a brows and like a like a brush to to do his eyelashes and shit when it's this pretty you know what i mean you have to give him more drama i can see you're giving him a little because the light is placed in the safety zone if i draw a diagram of your shot that's your background that's your subject that's your camera and the light is like right here it's right it's right beside you can see it's literally right beside it's giving you the slightest shadow here the slightest shadow here but overall it's still very safe so again just push that light radically that way hit him more from the side or sky the light and hit him more from the top to darken here 
darken here the side of his cheeks it gives him a little bit more of a rock jaw it's going to give you shadow under here and make it a little bit more um edgy um dramatic um and um hard we want this guy to feel harder he looks a little too soft with that pretty light and another version of him you can see he's turning away just a bit this no shadow that's happening here i'm liking what's happening down here um this highlight is great you can see this highlight is starting to get hot um just meaning if you look here you can see the difference between this highlight which is a third okay i want you guys to see this, this is super important this is plus a third this is normal this highlight is one third brighter okay as you go up in scale with your rear light this now is two thirds to one stop this now is and you can see how white this is this is now two thirds to plus one stop and the reason that you didn't change the light you didn't change the light but the position that he's standing in proportion to this rear light which is back here if this is your set this is your guy this is your rear light this is your front light and this is your camera if this guy here comes in and instead of stepping right here steps right here now the light from here just got brighter if he stands here the light from here just got brighter again so that's what happened is although you're framing this the same way right he is um over here where the other guy is here and that's why this brightness is different so when you're in the studio and you're shooting the first thing that you do is you put a, a black x or tape on the spot so they're exactly in the right light meter reading from here because if they move over that light back there is going to miss them or it's going to hit them too hot so small thing saber but the more you shoot the more you shoot in the studio the more you go through those processes the more that i can correct and you're like oh my god i've never put a mark on the floor when you put that mark that's what stops them from being too close to you too far away too close too far away to left to right do you know what I mean? So you put that mark now from your light meter reading, you know, as long as they all go into that same mark, you have it. And also make sure in between people, you shoot a test shot, test shot, check it, check your rear highlights, check your blah, blah, blah. And um, once you've shot everybody in that safe light, don't be afraid to now try something radical and shoot everybody again with the radical idea. You know what I mean? Like you shoot fast, like I know you do. So, and again, you're doing such a good job. You're pushing so hard. Um, the clothes that this guy's wearing is super dope. He's got Carhartt, he's got a Supreme shirt on, but the pose, like him just standing straight, this is the guy that you have to work with the most. This is the guy who has the hardest time being in front of the camera. If I start with this photo, which is his first one, you can see the crossed arms, he, the way that he's holding his mouth, like he's not as comfortable as some of the other dudes are. This guy um, here is relatively comfortable in front of the camera. He looks the most comfortable. This guy looks pretty comfortable, a little vain, but pretty comfortable. This is his best photo. And then with this guy, you can see you just need either to share with us a different shot or when you're posing him, just get him like, put your hands in your pockets, have him adjusting the hat because the hat is too far up. You can see because the hat is so far up, it looks not like his hat. It doesn't look like he would wear that hat. It looks like a stylist put that hat on him. The hat would be way more like forward. I think that it just looks a little too propped. And then because he's just standing like this, it looks like the clothes don't belong to him. So these are things when you're shooting bands and when you're shooting people who aren't used to being in front of the camera, you have to massage them into the point where forget that there's a camera so they can just act 
more real. You know, this pose for me, we're lacking. This is like just his hands and his face, just how he's looking. He just hates everything about this happening. And you can see that he hates this. You can see it in his face. So that is not something that we're trying to like capture and share. You can see this guy, he loves himself and he loves being in front of the camera. You can see it in his face. You know what I mean? So you have to get everybody as relaxed as that guy is because this photo next to this photo, you can just see the difference. Yeah. Saber pushing through doing these commercial jobs. Every time you do it, you're going to get better. Every single time that you shoot, every time you shoot a band, every time you shoot a portrait, every single time you're going to get better. Know that, um, we also, how I shoot always is I always start really safe. I always start really safe. And then I radicalize my photos as I go through. I, I start safe and I radicalize. So don't forget the radical part. You're, you're starting safe. You're doing the same thing. But you can, I've seen you do crazy things with your photos. I've seen you paint yourself. I've seen dirt. I've seen you be really edgy. I don't want you to forget the edginess that you do that got you hired in the first place. You got hired based on how edgy and how cool your photographs are. When it comes time to shoot for a job, don't then go safe because they're paying because there's clients involved because there's a record company involved. They want you at your best. And when you're at your best, you're shooting free. You're shooting from your hip. You're excited. And um, yeah, and you're not nervous. You seemed maybe a little nervous when you shot this, maybe because it's been a bit since you've shot. Don't be nervous. You got it. All right, guys, I hope you guys found today helpful. That is the end of the photos, I do believe, except for one photo that Saber says is just beautiful. One pick I made for commercial work for a gas and oil company. You can see the difference between his personal work and his commercial work. This is one of his commercial photographs. This is beautiful, Saber. Let's go. Really beautiful. So this is for an oil and gas pipeline that he got hired to shoot. This is gorgeous, dude. Really, really, really great. Wow. I, there, what do I say? That could have been a thumbnail. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. And yes, shooting free is the key. Everybody who came out to hang out with me today for this amazing podcast we call Behind the Picture, I thank you. I do this show every Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern time. I also do Ask a Photo Pro Tuesday and Thursday at 2 p.m. I'm here to help you guys, the emerging photographers, level up your work. All you got to do is submit. All you have to do is ask questions. I am here. I'm at your service. I'm trying to help you guys get better at photography. I hope you guys like my content. If you do like this content and like my smiling face, please consider dropping this video a like. If you got to the end of this video and are seeking more content, please consider watching one of my playlists, one of my past episodes, or the whole season. Season four has been amazing. I hope you guys agree. I will be back tonight playing Warzone. If anybody is into that kind of thing, I will be on Twitch live tonight sometime around 9 p.m. And I'll be back here Tuesday at 2 p.m. ready to review your photos, ready to inspire. If you guys haven't seen my latest 50 millimeter lens diaries, please watch that video. I put like 30 hours of editing. I've crammed over like a hundred photos in that video. So please have a take, watch that next. I love you guys. Thank you for watching. We'll see you soon.